On May 20th, 1988, professional bull rider Lane Frost becomes the first rider to ever stay on legendary bucking bull Red Rock for eight seconds, beating him in the Challenge of Champions in the showdown of one of the greatest bull riders and one of the greatest bulls. Here's a story about how all this happened today on Daily Sports History. Before we tackle today's episode, let's take a brief time out and talk about Sports Social Pro. If your sports social media game is about as coordinated as a three-legged race, fear not. We're here to help your online presence from Benchwarmer to MP. Skip the social media stress and score big with us at Social Media Pro. Learn all you need to know at dailysportshistory.com slash social. Welcome to Daily Sports History. I'm Ethan Reese, your guide to a rapid deep dive into sports history every day. And today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to give you a trivia question and to see if you can answer it by the end of the episode. If you listen all the way to the end, we'll give you the answer in case you miss it. Can you name the only bull to remain unridden for his entire PRCA career? Now, for this story, we're going to tell you a little bit like a boxing match, give you the two competitors and how they ended up meeting in the ring for their ch- for their challenge of champions. First, let's start with the bull, Red Rock, who was born in 1967 and was actually an orphan calf as his mother died in childbirth and he had to be raised and milked by another cow. And he was named after the Red Rock Formation near Burnt River Ranch, where he was born. And he ended up weighing 17 hundred pounds and was eventually sold after he turned two to Mert Honking, who is a local stock contractor for the International Professional Rodeo Association. And he would take Red Rock to rodeos across the Northwest United States. And he and Mert saw something in Red Rock he hadn't seen it a lot, as he somehow knew and could feel how the rider on top of him was feeling and he would go the opposite. He just had a, a sense that many bulls do not have. And in 1983, he was named the Bucking Bull of the Year for the IPRA. Now, after this year, Red Rock was ready to make the jump to the top level of bull riding. But Mert, his owner, was experiencing some financial issues, and he contacted John Groney of the Groney Brothers Rodeo Company as he heard they had treated their animals with respect and quality and he asked that they wanted to purchase him. And John jumped at the opportunity. He knew that Red Rock was a special bull. He had seen him ride before, and they immediately gave Mert $10,000 for the bull and took him to the top level of rodeo in the 1980s, which was the, profe- which was the PCRA, which is the Professional Rodeo Cowboy Association, which at the time in the 1980s was the largest rodeo association. And he got started with a bang and didn't let go. Even though he was already eight years old, which is old by rodeo bull standards, he came in at the highest level and made it all the way to the National Finals Rodeo from 1984 to 1987. And every year he would buck off that year's riding champion with ease. And when we say buck off for rodeo, to be unridden means you didn't make it to eight seconds. For your ride to count, you have to maintain only one hand grabbing the harness and one hand free for eight seconds. If you don't get to eight seconds, then your ride does not count and you do not get any points for that run. And in 1987, on his last ride, Red Rock bucked off Cody Custer and became the bucking bull of the year and would go on to retire after this with over 300 outs meaning no one had ridden him officially by the time of his retirement. With a total of 307, and retiring at the age of 11, he went down as the only bull to go undefeated in PRCA history. Now that year he retired in 1987, Lane Frost became the rider of the year. And who was Frost? He was your typical rodeo kid. He grew up on the rodeo circuit as a junior, but also participated in other sports such as wrestling in junior high. 
but he won the Oklahoma National High School Bull Riding Championship in 1981 and would continue his bull riding and become a professional after he graduated high school in 1982. And he qualified for his first national finals rodeo in 1984. And as we said earlier, he would continue his successful rodeo career and in 1987 would be named Bull Rider of the Year at the age of 24. And then in 1988, Red Rock and Lance Frost's careers would pass. Now, after Red Rock had retired, John Groney thought about a special thought about a special competition he could put together where he would bring two champions from the bullfighting world, the bull in Red Rock and the rider, it's Frost, together to go in a challenge of champions. And they would go from city to city across the West in a series of seven different matches to see who was really the champion. As Red Rock was still in good health and Frost was ready to challenge the bull. As everyone wanted to challenge Red Rock, as he wasn't a massive bull and overpowered you, he was more of a technical bull, someone you thought you could beat, but no one ever did. That was the case until the fourth match they had. Frost finally rode Red Rock for that legendary eight seconds. And when the whistle blew, it was over. Someone had finally beaten Red Rock, and it was Frost. This was a great moment for rodeo. It helped raise the popularity of the sport. And these two competitors, Red Rock and Lance Frost, were ever, forever connected because sadly, a year later, while riding at the Cheyenne Frontier Days, Frost was riding a bull named Taking Care of Business. And he had rode him for his eight seconds, got knocked off, but the bull didn't let him go away and pressed his right horn into Frost's back and pushing him down into the mud, breaking several ribs. And despite Frost, Initially standing up after taking care of business had removed his horn, he collapsed and was pronounced dead in the arena. He was one of the best bull riders at the time. His life was tragically taken so quickly. And at the memorial service for Frost, the groaning company actually took Red Rock to be there with him as they were connected. And when Frost was inducted into the Bull Riding Hall of Fame, Red Rock went with him. Now, there was a positive thing to come out of this as... After Frost passed away, one of his best friends, Cody Lambert, devised a device, a vest for riders to wear for the exact thing that took his friend. Similar to a Kevlar vest that the the police wear, or better known as a bulletproof vest, riders you now see wear this vest for this very reason. And the story of Frost and even battling Red Rock was told in a movie starring Luke Perry back in the 90s called Eight Seconds. And it's a great story it's a sad story and now riders are required to wear this vest and he may have saved other lives in the process of losing his and in 1994 red rock finally passed away from a stroke and is buried at the groney ranch and will always be remembered as one of the greatest bulls to ever ride and i think we can all remember a time where these moments are so precious to us We can be at our highest of heights, like Frost was, when he had just beaten the unbeatable bull just a year earlier, and out of nowhere his life was taken tragically too short. We don't know what to head, so be your best at everything you do, and maybe you can reach your mountaintop and be forever remembered. And remember us by subscribing and following Daily Sports History wherever you're listening so you don't miss any episodes. Because guess what? We got another one coming out tomorrow. And did you catch the trivia question? The only bull ever in PRCA history to be unridden was Red Rock. See you guys tomorrow.